What? Mm. <laughs> what is this? A plain white tease review? Oh, well, there we go. That's better. What's up everyone, John from ARTV. It is time for a review of the debut album by a band that I am very excited about. They are called Teenage Wrist. They are now signed to Epitaph Records, a great record label. If you missed my video on my top seven favorite independent record labels, then you should be checking that out. But the debut album is called Chrome Neon Jesus. What an enticing name. As soon as I heard that, I kind of chuckled to myself. And I thought, okay, what is this band going for? I actually heard a couple of their singles preceding this, and I got into them, I think it was like early 2017, when their single Stoned Alone that appears on this very record came out. Stoned Alone had such a washed out, almost 90s latent feel to it that I couldn't resist. The guitars are great, and they get louder as they progress, and I like their vocalist a whole lot as well. The vocals often do get pushed to the back burner a bit in favor of the louder instrumentation, which reminds me of some of the grunge era and some of 90s rock and alternative in general. Obviously, I'm a big fan of that era. I was born in the 90s. I have a lot of love for 90s music, and on their album Chrome Neon Jesus, they definitely continued that sound and those themes for the most part. Now, I do think that some people are going to complain about the fact that it's too 90s, or it's too washed out, or their vocalist sounds like he's trying to be the 90s, but I really don't think that that's a valid complaint, especially since so many people are just trying to do the 80s, and that gets a lot of praise. Why can't someone do the 90s? Now, I'm not going to be that guy that just slaps that label on him and says, oh, this is the 90s nostalgia band, and that's all they are. That's not the case whatsoever. They have some fresh ideas and some fresh takes on things. In fact, there's some great guitar solos that pop up here, a lot of energy on some of these tracks and some euphoria that breaks through as well. And I like the fact that not all of the lyrics are so easy to interpret or just on the nose. They make you ponder or else just leave you a bit puzzled. I mean, I know we all didn't know what all those 90s songs were about. There's nothing wrong with having that vibe to your music or that connectivity between the 11 tracks on this album. And the album definitely does flow very, very well. There's a few moments that, like I said, do get a bit tedious for me, and those come in the form of like Kibo, the transitory track that just kind of feels like it comes out of left field. It's like after Black Flamingo ends, that one just all of a sudden kicks back in out of nowhere, but it's not attached to Black Flamingo. Think like Future by Paramore where it fades out, and then, you know, it fades back in, except it's not connected, so it doesn't make that much sense. Anyways, getting back to the good stuff, another one of the pre-release singles was Dweeb, and that is the song that truly did it for me. In fact, I would still probably label that and list that as my favorite tune on the entire album, Chrome Neon Jesus. This one right here has a very hard edge to it. It does, once again, remind me of the grunge era, and this one is one of the harder-hitting tunes here. You'll notice the guitar intro that starts off slow and then slams you like a ton of bricks. That's not a bad thing whatsoever. And the chorus, even though it is very repetitive, it's not something where I, I just hate it because it's repetitive. I think some people get the wrong idea in their head. It's like John has complained about this, and he's complained about people just using repetitive phrases or what uh ohs or other things that aren't actual choruses in place of actual lyrics. It's not always the case. In fact, many of my favorite songs use these elements, and I don't have a problem with them whatsoever. It's just that it doesn't always work. But here, on a track like this, it absolutely does. And that guitar solo is perfection. That is one of my favorites because it's just very venomous. You can tell that there's seething rage just pummeling through this track's veins. I'm digging the distortion that we get throughout this album, and I have to compliment the band as musicians. I think that they all definitely kill it on a technical skill level. It's not always something that's branching out and daring to do something different, but it's played very well and skillfully, and it shows room for improvement in the future. Even though this might not be the most magnificent debut, there's great tracks here. For example, I was talking about distortion. I love the guitars on the track that comes near the end of this record, Rollerblades. And then something a little bit more pondering that takes a little bit to get going, the track Super Machine. That one is definitely like reflective 90s to a T, and I'm okay with that 100%. This feels like a Saturday 
out with your friends or something like that. The record ends on three very solid tracks, Daylight, which I dig lyrically, Spit, which does feel a bit angsty in the right ways, and then Waitress, which is a heavier, moving tune that closes this album out on an epic five minute note. This is just the perfect way to close this album. And I also can't fail to mention the opening track, the title song, Chrome Neon Jesus. That one caught me by surprise right off the bat because it wasn't exactly the heaviest thing right away, but it lures you in with that guitar. And you know that tone that I'm talking about. As soon as you hear this track, you'll know what I'm talking about at least. This is one that does lure you in and then it just kind of brings in the rest of the band, and you're hooked from there. The only song that I haven't mentioned at this point is track number three, Swallow, which I didn't hear before the album came out, but apparently it was one of the singles, and I can totally see why. There is a lot that's penetrating through this song, and you can feel like the band, or at least the singer, was going through something here. And the chorus is one of the best on Chrome Neon Jesus, and that guitar solo reminds me of something from the 90s meets like Jack White, because that guitar wails and shrieks, and I'm a sucker for stuff like that. I'm all over it. While this debut LP isn't going to win over everyone, some people are going to see it drowns in its influences and stuff like that, it shows a lot of promise. And for me personally, I got a lot of enjoyment from this project, even if I'm not in love with it overall. There were a few detractors, like I felt like some of the songs were a bit too similar, and I don't think the replay factor is going to be extremely high for the entire project, but the good thing is, is that they have talent, and they are rocking out, they are showing a lot of promise in 2018, so I'm inclined to give this project a strong 3.5, maybe even a light 4. I'd be curious to know, what do you guys think of Teenage Wrist? Have you heard any of their songs? I found them thanks to Spotify recommending them to me back in 2017. Are you going to check out this LP? And if you've already heard it then please comment your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for checking out this review of an indie band, a smaller band, and I feel like they're not going to get the love that they deserve, and this review probably won't be seen by a ton, but for those of you who watched to the end, thank you so much for tuning in, and if you're able to, please support me on Patreon at that top link down below. It truly helps videos like this keep coming every single month at ERTV. Another way to get over to my Patreon is the direct link over in the annotation in the corner of your screen that you'll see there. If you want to see another recent indie review I did, click right over here, or another recent video I posted on the channel right over here. All of my social media links you can find in the description down below. Connect with me over there, most active on Twitter. And other than that, I'll see you very soon on ARTV.